Hey, good evening. It's Monday, March 11th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. We begin a new week trying to talk about things that really matter, the important things, the everyday things that help us honor God more and more each day. Continuing to look at this series in Ephesians about to know God better. Remember, Paul says in the beginning, verse 17 of chapter 1, at least one of the reasons, the main reasons, if not the main reason for the book of Ephesians is so that we can know God better. Paul prays that earnestly. He's praying for that. And we see that theme come in throughout the book. Then in chapter 4, when he's talking about the church, what the church's job is, the saints are supposed to be at the beginning of, end of verse 12, beginning of verse 13. The saints, the folks, you and me, we're to be built up as we do the work of the ministry until we all reach the unity of faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming more mature. Picking right back up from chapter 1, he wants us to know God more, more deeply, better. Well, we're doing these things. We're involved in all the things that we do, the work of the ministry, so that we can be more intimate, reach more of the knowledge of God. And then he says that we protect ourselves, and that's the thumbnail tonight. You see this lion protecting. Well, how do we protect those we love? One of the ways is to speak the truth in love. So Paul says that speaking the truth in love, we will grow and become in every aspect mature. And we continue to grow as each part does its work. And then verses 14 to 17, I mean 17 to 19, Paul talks about how the world, the Gentiles, live according to their desires, wanting just doing what they want. And that turns into something ugly, as we saw. But in verse 20, he says, but you didn't come to know Christ that way. Again, back to this theme, he wants us to know Christ more deeply. We're protected as we know God more deeply. How do we do that? Well, in verse 25, then, Paul begins a series of things that are put off and put on, things that we should not do, things that we should do. But the purpose here, again, is not so much to earn points or to make ourselves acceptable to God, but so that we will know Christ more deeply. So he says in verse 25, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Now this, to your neighbor here, throws us off a bit, because we thought thinking about the neighborhood or whatever. But in this case, neighborhood, neighbor is those who are close to you. Remember the context. He says, we're all members of one body. So neighbor, in this sense, is a fellow believer who has a right, who has a need to hear the truth from you, to speak well, because that's how we guard and protect. That's how we assume posture of protection we see in this lion in the, in the thumbnail. So speaking truthfully is how we build up and protect those close to us. Now again, Paul is drawing on the Old Testament for this illustration. Remember in Romans 15 we read that the purpose of everything that was written down is for us so that we might grow and know God more deeply. Well here, Paul is quoting from Zechariah chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. And the situation is very similar. The people in Zechariah's day are getting ready. Well, no, I'm sorry, they're getting ready. They need to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem, and they've kind of followed, they've slacked off their task. And Zechariah is urging them to do the work together, to rebuild the wall to protect the city. It's been sitting kind of dormant for 20 years, and so he's challenging them get back to work. And this is what he says. This is what the Lord tells them. These are the things that you're to do as you're rebuilding this wall. Again, God doesn't give them a course in destruction, construction right here. Rather, he says this. The things you're to do, speak truth to one another, to each other. That's this, this only path of protection. They need to be together. Speak truth to one another. Render true and sound judgment to each other in your courts. In other words, deal honestly with integrity according to the truth, speaking the truth. 
Do not plot evil against each other. In other words, avoid scheming, avoid white lies, avoid partial truths, avoid trying to manipulate the situation so it gets what you want. And if you just shade the truth a little bit, it'll work out. No, God is saying don't do that. And do not love to swear falsely. In other words, we're representing God. Don't do things in such a way that represent us well, or to swear or to give allegiance to anything but God. So those four things are exactly what Paul is referencing here in, in Ephesians. He's saying, therefore, you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. We have a job to do. We have to protect each other. We have to grow, become mature in following God. This is how you protect those that you love, by speaking the truth, not harshly, but all of it, in love. That means that you care about them more than you care about you. you. You choose your words carefully. We're going to see more of that as we go through chapter four. We need the truth. As members of one body, as Christians working together, we need to be truthful with each other. So if we're to grow, to be built up and to protect one another, we must speak the truth in sacrificial love to each other with the purpose so that we can all come to know God more deeply. We're not talking about manipulation. We're not talking shading the truth. We're talking about the faithfulness of what the Proverbs talk about. Beware of the kisses of an enemy because they're profuse, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. Will we care for each other? Will we represent Christ well? Will we tell each other the truth and not just, well, I don't want to get into that right now. We need tact. We need compassion. We need grace. But we must speak the truth. And that's the key to growth. That's the key to building us up. That's the key to protecting us. If you want to protect your family, your brothers, your sisters, those close to you, if you want to protect those that you have good relationships with, if you want to tech, protect those in the church that you labor with, people that you are striving with to advance the kingdom, speak the truth in love. Speak truth, as Paul says. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood. Speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. See, that's what ties it together to the immediate family of Christ, both in your home, in the community of the kingdom, and the community of the church. And that's the thought for this night. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. We're going to continue going through Ephesians in this way, and uh, the Lord bless you. Thanks so much for being here, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.